Welcome back for part two of the kiln build. I'm using a wooden dowel in my lathe to wrap the canthal wire I'll be using as a heating element. The dowel is sized such that when I take the spring off and it expands slightly, it should just fit into the channels I carved in the fire brick. I need to count the number of coils that will go in each section. And then I can stretch them to the appropriate length. Now I just have to get them all to fit.
You'll notice I originally planned to do three coils per side, but I only had enough wire to do two per side. But, you know. Now for the part I was most excited about. I decided to use quartz glass tubing to hold the wires in place. Uh, if they get too hot, they'll sag and short out and uh, cause a failure. But quartz glass has a super high melting point and is very good at handling thermal stress, so we'll see how it holds up long term. I of course could have used ceramic rods or cylinders, but uh, those are quite expensive. These I think I got for less than $20 on eBay. The ends of those glass rods fit nicely in the cutouts in the corners. I fold over and twist the extra leads of the canthal wire. That effectively gives me half the resistance, so the portion of the wire outside of the kiln won't get nearly as hot as what's inside. And I add some fiberglass braiding to cover those up. and add a ceramic terminal block. Now I can add the feet. Now for the electrics. I'm using a salvage temperature controller as well as a gigantic solid state relay. 
I think it's rated for 80 amps and a small 5 volt DC power supply to power the temperature controller. And I of course use terminal blocks to connect everything together. I put a fuse in line just in case. It's not getting nearly as hot as I planned. Well, while it heats up, I'll cut the outer insulation. I'm using a ceramic fiber board and a ceramic wool insulation. and of course copper wire to hold it all together for now. I cut the hole in the top for the crucible and the insulation's done. Clearly I'm not getting enough power out of 110 volts, but fortunately I have access to 220 volts. All right, take two. After just a few seconds, the coils start glowing a dull red. And then a much brighter red. Yeah, I think that'll do. It's still surprisingly cool on the outside. So there we have it, part two. Uh, part three, I have to get everything finalized and put together. But for now, the kiln is working. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully it won't be too long before I can get part three put together. In the meantime, thanks for watching.